I apologise for that not so good reenactment of how I actually got the chuck off the spindle. Because the day I get it removed, of course I don't have any of my camera gear with me. And a big thanks to everyone who wrote in suggestions on how I could remove it. I apologise if I didn't make it clear in the last video, but yes, this back plate does screw off this spindle. The problem I was having was that they over it on at the factory and they just seized it in place. I had to use a custom jig to hold the indexing wheel in place, penetrating oil, an impact driver and leverage from a spanner to actually get it removed. It really is crazy just how tightly they torqued it on. And I was really expecting there to be damage to the threads just because how tightly it was on, but after checking it over, I was pretty surprised that there was no damage. I mean the threads could be made a little bit nicer, but there's no damage at all to them. Now that I've gotten the chuck removed, I'd like to get the dividing head taken apart, cleaned up, and I'd also like to replace the factory grease. The first thing that I'd like to do is clean up the dovetails. I'm pretty sure there's some grit in there that I couldn't get out before, and that needs to be removed. And by the looks of it, I need to remove the dividing plate and spindle before I can remove it. And this is a really good example of why it's a good idea to clean these tools up. It looks like there's some chips and debris left over from machining that they didn't clean out. At the back we have a needle thrust bearing. Certainly not the best way to remove a bearing, but it works. I wouldn't mind using a press in the future. So this dividing head uses a taper roller bearing in conjunction with that thrust bearing that we removed beforehand. From what I've been told, in the past some other dividing heads have used plain bearings, so I'm very happy to see this setup with tapered roller bearings. It's really nice to see this setup, though I might have to play around with the preload once I reassemble it to minimise the run out and make sure the chuck doesn't move forward when I'm cutting. One thing I wasn't expecting to see was that the worm gear, which I thought was bronze, is actually made from steel. I could have sworn it looked more bronze beforehand, maybe the grease was just giving it a bronzish look, but it's certainly made from steel. However, the parts list definitely says it's made from a phosphor bronze. As long as it's properly lubricated, it should work okay. The thing I did notice though was it's more of a helical gear than a proper worm gear. The teeth are slanted like a helical gear. My understanding, and it applies to all the other worm gears that I've seen, is that they usually have a concave profile on the teeth for better meshing. It really wouldn't surprise me if they just hobbed several gears at once in order to save time. In a lot of factories they hob multiple gears at once to save setup time, and that's fine for spur gears and helical gears, but I'm pretty sure with worm gears they're hobbed individually to form that specific tooth pattern. Overall it's just a lot cheaper and faster. Not a huge problem since I can mesh them really well, though I really was expecting a proper worm gear, so I might have to replace it in the future if I run into any problems. Now I can't seem to remove the spur gear, that retaining ring seems to be held in with a grub screw and a pin, which I'd have to drill out. Looking inside the housing, it seems that everything is decently machined, every surface that needs machining is machined, However, there is a large pool of oil and what looks to be metal shavings and dust in it, so I'll need to clean that out. There's also a fair amount of grabbing when I'm trying to tilt and remove the head. For some reason, there's a big recess and it's filled with chips and a big pool of oil in the base. Now I'm not trying to get the surface smooth, in fact the texture probably helps retain oil, but what I'm trying to do is remove some of those high spots. And this is hardly a precision flat stone, but it's not like this is a flat surface anyway. 
and I can certainly feel that the diamond stone has removed some of those high spots. There's also a few birds that they left that I'd like to remove. And the head slots into the dovetails a lot easier than before. There's no grabbing whatsoever. It's a huge improvement. I cleaned out the gear and bearings as best as I could and I added some new grease. And the grease that I'm using should be rated to be used in bearings and gears like this. Now the consensus online seems to be a little bit split on whether you use grease or oil. Even though there is a button oiler, it doesn't deposit oil on the gear too well and since I'm not going to open it up for a while, I've settled on using grease. Plus this thing tends to leak oil every now and then, so I'd rather use grease just to keep everything clean. And now that I can take the chuck off, I'm able to use Morse taper tooling. I don't have one, but if I had a Morse 2 taper collet chuck, I could use it in this dividing head. While I was at it, I also cleaned out the locking pin pinion. There's a bit of crud in there, which I wanted to remove. They also didn't include a locking grub screw from the factory, so I added one so the handle stays in the hole. One thing I did get wrong in the previous video was these. These are keys that are used to key the head to the mill table, so you can remove it, and when you put it back on, these little keys will fit in the T-slots and the dividing head should remain parallel to the table so as long as you set it up correctly. Now these keys are a little bit big for my table so I'll have to machine them down in the future. The final thing I'll talk about is the chuck and back plate. Now it's on pretty tightly, so tightly that I couldn't separate them. I imagine it's because the part that registers them to the chuck was made to have a really tight fit and what they've done is they probably used the screws to pull the chuck onto the back plate and seat it there, well, pretty much permanently. I could use heat to loosen it, but there are some plastic parts on the chuck that I'd rather not melt if I don't have to. What I've seen other people do is drill through the back plate, tap the holes, and use the screws to jack the back plate away from the chuck. And that might be on the agenda one day, but at the moment, it's not a huge priority. The chuck works pretty fine at the moment, I can't feel any grit that I'd want to remove, so for the moment, I'm just going to leave it be. Overall, it's been a huge relief for me to be able to get this thing apart and actually clean it, and I really have to thank each and every one of you who suggested a method on how to actually get this thing apart. Cleaning it and adding new grease has had a small but noticeable impact to the action of the dividing head, and I'm really happy about it. And with that, thank you very much for watching, hope you learned something, see you next time.